We are back. This is segment two. My name is Rick Bowden and I'm president of the Pinckney Putnam Hamburg Hell Chamber of Commerce. And we are having a candidate forum. This is being uh, broadcast. Uh, some people are watching it on Facebook Live and then this will be in segments to be shared on social media. But this is being, uh, will be, it's on October, on, on October, we're here on October 12th. So this is for all candidates that are in contested races for the November 3rd election. So the next position that we're going for is the county clerk position. Uh, the county clerk, the incumbent, is Elizabeth Hundley, the Republican. She is not here. There will be a statement read for her by Mike Murphy. I apologize because I'm not as familiar with the county calendar and today is Columbus Day. And so the county offices were closed. So we had a couple candidates that uh, uh, did take a um, extended uh, weekend because they had today off. So Elizabeth wasn't able to be here, but Mike Murphy will be reading a statement. And then the challenger is the Democrat, Jordan Jensel. So first we'll have Mike Murphy uh, read his letter. Um, just for everybody's clarification, I'm still waiting for some more questions. But uh, Mike will not be able to answer any questions. Uh, Jordan will be the only one that will participate in any question and answer. So, Mike. Thank you, and thank you, uh, Ricks and the uh, Com Chamber of Commerce for allowing this. Uh, on behalf of Elizabeth Hundley, it's been my honor and per privilege to serve as the residents of Livingston County in the past five years as your county clerk. I was raised in northern Indiana and moved to Livingston County in 1989. My husband and I were blessed to raise our three children on our horse farm in Genoa Township. While working together at our family business, I earned my bachelor degree in accounting from Cleary University. I continued my education and graduated near the top of my class from Thomas M. Cooley Law School. I joined the State Bar of Michigan in 2000 and have been a member ever since. Our family has grown to include our son-in-law and two wonderful grandchildren. The main four areas of responsibility within the clerk's office include clerk to the 44th Circuit Court, clerk to the Board of Commissioners, vital records, and elections. I'm responsible for five separate budgets and balance over 20 trust and agency accounts. The clerk's office currently has a team of 17 members providing services directly to the public. My experience as a business owner, accountant, and attorney provide the perfect skill set for the clerk's office. There have been many accomplishments during my tenure in office. A sampling of those accomplishments include conducting the first ever statewide presidential recount, implementing the largest change in Michigan's CPL law when gun boards were eliminated, implementing the process of fingerprinting new CPL applicants within our office, reorganizing the county clerk legal division to improve office efficiencies and customer service, selecting and transitioning Livingston County to a new voter system, selecting, customizing, and launching an online freedom of information portal, making it easier for the public to access records, providing services to the public during the global pandemic, and being among the first county clerk offices to resume full service to the residents, serving as a member of the Election Modernization Advisory Committee after being appointed by our Secretary of State, serving as a member of the Virtual Courtroom Task Force after being appointed by the State, Administ State Court Administrative Office. And recently I was elected by my fellow clerks as third vice president of the Michigan Association of County Clerks. During my time in office, I've demonstrated the ability to work cohesively with differing groups and organizations. I built a strong relationship with the 18 city and township clerks here in Livingston County. This enhanced relationship resulted in the Livingston County Municipal Clerks Association endorsing my bid for re-election. We also have a tremendous working relationship between the county clerk legal division and the judges on our bench. I'm fortunate to have been endorsed by all current county commissioners and many retired commissioners as well. I pride myself on my ability to work with others to benefit the residents of our county. My goals and priorities will remain similar if re-elected to another term. First and foremost, we will continue providing our residents excellent customer service, including but not limited to accurate, prompt, and respectful service. We will work toward the goal of utilizing continuing education, training, and feedback from our customers. I will apply the law as written as a member of the County Apportionment Commission. The County Apportionment Commission has 60 days from the release of the 2020 census data to divide the county into commissioner districts. The Apportionment Commission consists of the county clerk, county treasurer, county prosecutor, and the county chairpersons of the two major political parties. The commission follows guidelines provided for in law when determining district boundaries. I'll continue to improve the use of technology to enhance services to the residents. Two main areas of focus will be electronic filing of circuit court records and a secure portal for online marriage license applications. Finally, I'll work to ensure our elections remain accurate, secure, fair, and transparent. 
My office, together with the city and township clerks, will continue to navigate the many changes brought about by the recent constitutional amendment. We'll continue improving training for our elections inspectors and educate our voters. Our family is proud to call Livingston County home. We love our community and proudly support many of our local charitable organizations. I'm a member of the Livingston Sunrise Rotary Club, Greater, Greater Area Chamber of Commerce, Howell Chamber of Commerce, and Women of Work Skills. Public service is a privilege I do not take for granted. I've worked incredibly hard over the past five years and promise to continue working hard for you. I humbly ask for your vote November 3rd. Please vote Elizabeth Hundling for County Clerk. That was Mike Murphy reading a letter on behalf of uh, Clerk Elizabeth Hundley. Uh, the challenger is Jordan Jensel. He's the Democratic challenger. Jordan? Hello. Yes, my name is Jordan Jenso. I am the Democratic candidate for Livingston County Clerk. I uh, moved to the county in 2003 and I currently live in Brighton with my wife and two daughters. And I am running for county clerk because really it began about 10 years ago when I served on the reapportionment committee uh, that redrew the county commission districts for this past decade. Um, I served as the chair of the Democratic Party at the time along with the current uh, county treasurer, county clerk, county prosecutor, and the chair of the Republican Party. And what I had witnessed and experienced firsthand was the committee members, the other four, pushing through a gerrymandered map that did not abide by the law, and it was quite disappointing. And so that kind of planted the seed where now, 10 years later, knowing that next year we're going to re be redrawing the district boundaries again, we need to have a county clerk who will not participate in gerrymandering that county commission map. And so the county clerk is the top elections official in the county. It really should not be a partisan race. It should not be a partisan position at all. When you're overseeing the elections, you need to be nonpartisan. And gerrymandering is one of the most partisan actions that one can engage in. And so that is why that is the crux of my campaign, to make it clear to the voters, just as in 2018, when a majority of the voters in Livingston County supported Proposal 2 to prevent gerrymandering at the state and congressional level, they need to support my candidacy for county clerk this year in order to prevent the county commission or county government from being gerrymandered next year. Um, additionally, I have been actively involved in grassroots um, campaigns over the past couple of years, including the People's Filibuster Campaign, to bring transparency to our county government. The county clerk's role is to be the reporting secretary for the county commission. And yet, we have a county commission who meets sometimes at 7.30 in the morning. Um, prior to COVID, it would be the only way you could know what was going on is to be there in person. And so I organized a group of local residents to uh, attend the meeting and make it clear that we wanted them to broadcast the meetings. They did begin to do so temporarily and then stopped broadcasting. So again, I organized people and I we showed up and put more pressure on them to broadcast. They have not yet fully brought it back. They're doing meetings over Zoom right now, but they're not even doing the basic step of recording those Zoom meetings and putting them online so you can see it at your own convenience, like many of you are doing right now with this forum. It is quite sad to see that our clerk, who's the recording secretary, doesn't take it upon herself to just make it easier for you as a Livingston County resident to know what's going on in the county government. And so I am a very grateful to have the opportunity to speak to the PPHH uh, chamber and I and all of the people in the audience today and I ask for your vote on November 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. That's Jordan Gentle, the Democratic candidate for county clerk. And Jordan, you'll be the only one answering questions. Okay. Um, how would you change the process with concealed, concealed carry, the CPL licenses? Uh, I don't really have any criticisms of the status quo when it comes to CPLs. Um, I do not currently have one, but my, a couple of my family members do. And with their process, what's important is that you have the training um, and you abide by all of the current uh, 
you know, requirements for obtaining it. But when it gets to the clerk's office, I, there's nothing that really needs to change, in my opinion, on that issue. Okay. Jordan, there's a lot of uh, media about uh, trust in elections and absentee ballots and everything. So uh, what would you do uh, working in the clerk's office to make sure that voting in, we can trust the voting in Livingston County with absentee ballots and other people voting for others or whatever, all, all the other claims about uh, voter fraud. So how would, how would you work things better? And this is a very important issue and another one where I have disagreements with my opponent uh, because it is very, very important for the voters to trust in our elections. And absentee voting is something that our county has been engaged in even prior to the passage of Proposal 3. About 30% of our county would vote absentee. And so any claims that absentee voting is not a secure system would have existed prior to this election. And with 30% of the voters using absentee voting prior to now, um, if there was a problem, it would have been able to be identified and you know, we would have to address it. But there is no actual instances of voter fraud on any scale that would make any difference at all. And so you have an ideology, a difference in ideology. You have the one side wanting to make things more restrictive and more difficult to vote in the name of election security. You have the other side wanting to make voting more accessible because we recognize that voting is already secure. And so there is a desire for those that are pushing the need for more security, there's a desire on their part to make it seem as though there's currently a problem with voter fraud, for instance. And so they, they push for things like, you know, stricter voter ID requirements. When in reality, that wouldn't change anything. To go back actually to the last question about CPLs, you often hear the argument when it comes to guns that gun laws don't stop criminals, they just stop law-abiding citizens. And the same type of rationale then could be applied to voting laws. If you are a law-abiding citizen and you happen to have had your wallet stolen the day before the election, if you're at a Halloween party, let's say, and then you go to show up to vote and, oh, you don't have your ID anymore, and the new <coughs> stricter laws say that you can't cast a ballot then because you're a law-abiding citizen, you've been harmed. But a criminal, if they really wanted to do that, A, it's irrational on their part to take the risk to cast one fraudulent vote by pretending to be somebody they're not. And B, a, having to obtain a fake ID is not such an insurmountable step if they were to do all of the other efforts to try to vote fraudulently, they would be able to do that as well. Um, so my opponent, she had criticized the Secretary of State's decision to mail out absentee ballot applications to all voters in the state, all registered voters in the state, back in May um, prior to that election. Uh, my opponent said that it was an illegal action by the Secretary of State. It was not. And, and this is where, when you're going to claim that the Secretary of State is doing something illegal, you need to know what the law is and you better be able to back it up. And there's no substance behind that claim. And it was really disheartening to see our county clerk levy a false accusation of criminality against our Secretary of State when the law was very clear that you know the, the Secretary of State and the Bureau of Elections is able to run the elections as they see fit, and there was nothing in there that would prevent them from being able to mail out applications for absentee ballots. I think that that was a uh, good decision on the Secretary of State's part. Okay. Jordan, the last question is, what changes, <coughs> I'm sorry, what, what changes do you think should be made in the operation of the clerk's office? So in the clerk's office itself with the staff of 17, 
I actually view it as a fairly fairly well run office. Um, you have the department with the record keeping side, the marriage licenses, birth certificates, and you have the election side. I've always had great interactions with the elections department, um, having run multiple campaigns for Brighton Library and such. Um, and so I, I, overseeing that department, I wouldn't make real significant changes. I would. I would implement changes in how I approach the role as county clerk in providing transparency for the local residents of Livingston County when it comes to our county government. That is, I think, the most important long-term change that I would implement is just making sure that as the recording secretary, anybody who wants to know what's going on in our county government and wants to observe the meetings would be able to do so with the ease and convenience of the people who are watching this right now. Okay. And the last question just came, I just had come in. Do you support grants from out-of-state part partisan political groups making large monetary grants to recruit and hire election workers and directing it to only to Detroit while other areas receive no subsidies? The case in point, Detroit now has money to pay $600 a day to be an election inspector, while other locations pay only $150 a day. So are you familiar with that practice? or Not familiar, what? and I would be curious if that was a federal grant or if it was... It said it's from state partisan political groups. So if, if it is political action committees that are contributing money to pay the... I'm sorry. To pay the election workers. The election workers, I would be opposed to that. I don't think that, I think that, that the funds for our election workers should come from the taxpayers and not from any political parties. Okay. Jordan, can you give us like a 30 second wrap up of why people should vote for you? Yeah, so um, basically, yeah, the crux of my campaign has been to highlight the possibility of our county commission being gerrymandered next year and how I am running as a slate along with our county treasurer candidate and county prosecutor candidate to guarantee that gerrymandering will not occur for the county commission for the next 10 years, to increase transparency of our county government and to encourage and promote the integrity of our elections with absentee ballots especially during the time of the pandemic. So please vote for me on November 3rd, Jordan Genso for County Clerk. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our next segment. <laughs> we, we heard from, uh, we had a letter read from Mike Murphy for uh, Elizabeth Hundley and also the candidate uh, Jordan Genso. We're gonna go to the next segment, uh, which is uh,